Uh, good morning. We've got a uh, squishy ball today for our spine safe mat class. And of course, I have uh, guest teacher Carmela. Um, so, so, what we're going to do is uh, lay down on our backs and place the ball underneath your sacrum. Okay, so a spine safe way to do that will be to uh, lay on one side, you come around to your back, so that way you've not flexed your spine. And then we'll take the ball, and the ball is a little bit deflated. So um, this is so to keep us from having, from lifting our uh, spines up too much. Okay, so we don't really want to load the neck and shoulders um, in an inappropriate way. So we'll lift up into a bridge and then place the ball underneath the sacrum and set our hips down on it. So um, the ball should squish down to maybe two to three inches thick once you've done that. And just kind of wiggle your hips around on the ball and make sure that, you, um, that uh, you're centered on the ball and that it's underneath your sacrum and not your low back. Okay, so that's really important. So you might want to make sure and like you can kind of squiggle down on the mat and just make sure that you've got um, your uh, the flat part of uh, the bone between your hips right on there. So we could we can just like wiggle the hips back and forth, do a little bit of hip dips here. Okay. And then pelvic tilt a few times, just kind of feel how the ball is underneath us. And then go around in circles on the ball. So just hip circles on the ball. So this, all of this is you're not trying to lift up. Um, we're just kind of moving the uh, pelvis and the, we're actually moving more by pushing with our legs and using a little bit of ab. Okay, so once we've done our side to side, back and forth and circles, let's find what we feel like is probably a um, neutral position for our pelvis. So let's check on that. And so you have the heels of your hands on your hip bones in front and then span your fingers down. So you've kind of got this sort of triangle shape to your hands and see if you can get a sense if those bones are horizontal to the mat. So if you feel like your fingertips are up higher than your hip bones, you're in a posterior pelvic tilt and you can sort of weight your tailbone down a little bit more. And if you feel that your hip bones are higher than your pubic bone, you can go ahead and pull into your abs a little bit more and see if you can just find neutral. Then we'll go ahead and uh, bring our fingers to our abdomen. So we want to span nice and wide here. See, and so that you're feeling your abs. And then take a breath, exhale, and bring one leg up to tabletop, and then take another breath, exhale, add the other leg, and bring your legs in a little closer than 90 degrees. So uh, we want to have our, our legs in a little bit closer than a chair position here. And then we'll take one thigh away from us until we find that we're working in our abs. So the floor is not a goal, right? The floor is a little further away. And then we'll bring our thigh back in and then bring your other thigh toward the floor, um, away from your body and bring it back in. So just try to move this morning with a little bit uh, slower pace, a little bit more intention and just really feeling what's happening in your abdomen and how we can use our finger pads as you know, like just a way to set up a biofeedback loop in our bodies. So you can feel the tightening in your belly and you can feel that there's a place where if you went further, your back might change position. So just to a couple more and just see where we are today. And of course, you'll feel a little bit of work in your thighs. Um, it's shared work with the abdomen. Okay, and then once we're done with those toe taps, let's take our knees and our hands and we'll just take our knees around in mirror image circles. 
And again, we're going to move a little bit slow when we're doing this because our hips are up on the ball. Make sure the back of your neck is long. So if you're feeling any undue pressure in your neck, um, then you may need to take the ball out and deflate it a bit. So hopefully you've got a ball that has a plug. And we'll go ahead and just carefully float our feet down to the mat. Looks like I've lost my assistant so I can move down a little bit further. Good. And then we'll take our um, arms down beside us and press into the mat and feel your postural muscles engage. Feel the back muscles engage. Just press for a moment. Now pull in your abs and pull up your pelvic floor and then press down into the ball, okay? So now we're pressing down into the ball and the mat, and then go ahead and keep the pressing down of your arms in place. Engage your abdominals a little bit more, engage your buttock muscles and lift up off the ball just enough to kind of, uh, you know, get your hips in the air a little bit, but without losing the ball. So it's a low, a bottom lift, okay. And then come back down and press into the ball again. And then lift up. So at each end point, we're holding for a moment, like a, a second, and feeling what the work is. So as we press down, we're feeling a little bit more ab. And then as we lift up, we're feeling the engagement of our buttock muscles and we're lifting up and maybe feeling a thigh stretch, maybe not, and just continuing to press into the mat. So let's do a couple more rounds here. So we'll press down into the ball and then lift up and find our buttock muscles. Nicely done. Okay, so we'll set our hips down on the ball, wiggle your hips back and forth, okay? And then continuing to just leave our arms relaxed and down and neck nice and long, let's go ahead and cross your right ankle above your left thigh, and we'll move into a figure four stretch. So if you don't feel a stretch with your simply keeping your left foot on the, on the mat, you can bring it a little closer and lift up onto your toes. And if you still don't feel a stretch, congratulations, you probably don't need the stretch. And that's actually a good thing. Now, the more I find that I repeat this stretch, you know, in my personal practice, the less I feel I really need it, but I keep doing it because I know it's a maintenance program once I feel it's not as intense of a stretch. That's something we can all do well to remember is that sometimes our corrective exercises and stretches, once the problem is resolved that we've been trying, that we've been working on, they become our maintenance program because we know that's what keeps our body healthy. And let's go ahead and unwind the stretch and then go to the other side. So left ankle on top of the right thigh. And if that placement does not elicit a stretch in your left buttock, then you just slide your foot in a little closer, maybe lift up on the toes, that brings your, your uh, leg in a little closer, and you just breathe. It almost feels like you're floating, you know, on a cloud with the ball underneath, doesn't it? So you can feel there's a little bit of sway going on. And it's interesting to note like where in that sway the stretch feels more needed. So we can just take note of that. Take a few more breaths here. And we'll go ahead and once we feel like we've accomplished that side, we'll place our foot flat back down on the mat, unwind the stretch, pull into belly and lift up your hips again. Lengthen your spine down, pull your shoulder blades down your back. And then we have hands back on the belly again. So let's take a breath. Exhale, pull belly in and pull pelvic floor up just a little bit. Bring your right leg up to tabletop, bring your left leg up to tabletop. Good, now 
Let's go ahead and just wing your elbows off the mat and find your balance, okay? And if you're fighting one direction or another, see and check, make sure that your ball is centered underneath you. Because if it's not centered, you will be fighting for balance really going in one direction primarily. Then once you've got your balance, you can bring your arms up toward the ceiling and set your shoulder blades down your back. So we're in a close tabletop, closer than a chair position. Now go ahead and reach your right leg long and make sure that you're at about a 45 degree diagonal in the room. So we don't wanna go super low and then bring the right leg back and then reach your left leg long and bring the left leg back. Okay, so let's keep working this single leg extension and just feel how your shoulder blades are pressing into the mat and feel how you can get your leg lengthening away from your body in a way that your abdominals are responding to the movements. The movements are very intentional at this point. We are, you know, just adding on a challenge to our ability to balance on the ball. Okay, so we'll do one more here. Very good. And then go ahead and just float one leg down to the mat leg is bent in the other. We can bring our arms down and then pull into belly. So think about pubic bone navel to sternum being all lined up. Slide your right leg out long on the mat. So you're gonna tighten up the buttock of the right leg, okay, your right buttock, and flex your foot as if you were standing. Just find a stretch in the front of your right hip. So, Hold there, it's a very active stretch. Your leg is tight, your foot is flexed, your rear end is active, we're breathing and our belly is pulled in. And then we'll go ahead and bring that leg in. Take a breath, recommit to your abdominal position and your pelvis position and slide the other leg out, squeeze your left glute, flex the foot. Take a couple of breaths, just lengthen the front of the hip. One more breath, bring your leg back in. Do a few little pelvic tilts on the ball. Okay, good. Now, let's go ahead and again, bring your right leg up to tabletop. Now, hands are on belly, elbows are down. Take your right leg up toward the sky. Nice. Now keep your left leg bent and begin to do some single leg circles on the right. So we're going to lower our thigh to where it's parallel with the other thigh. Take your leg out to the width of your mat and bring it up. So now if you move slowly enough, you can feel that the ball is accentuating the um, roll to the side that you know, your pelvis follows the leg. So what we need to do is pull into our left low ab at this moment where the right leg starts moving out and away and see if we can increase our stability. And then what we can do is lift our elbows off the mat, okay? And find a range where we are keeping our shoulder blades in contact with the mat. So it's gonna be a smaller range than if we didn't have the ball underneath us. And let's go the other direction. And if you feel like uh, bringing your arms up toward the ceiling, giving yourself a little bit more challenge, go ahead and do that. Try not to let your left leg splay out to the side. So we really need our left inner thigh working here as the right leg is circling about. So everything is active and we're breathing. Now let's do one more. Beautiful, and then we'll bring our right leg down and let's bring our arms down, pull into belly, lift your hips up off the ball just enough to get a little stretch at the front of the thigh. And we'll put our hips back down on the ball, shoulders are down, hands on abs, left leg comes in and extends up, good. And then we'll go ahead and bring our leg down, 
thighs become parallel. We take our leg out to the side to the width of the mat and we begin to find the right low ab that needs to respond to the movement of our leg as we circle it out and away. Okay, and when you're ready, lift up your elbows and bring your arms up toward the ceiling. So if you find that you're starting to kind of twist off the ball, that means the range of motion needs to be a little smaller. And then we need our right inner thigh active. So we want to keep our leg, our standing leg in alignment rather than splaying out. And let's go ahead and change directions. Keep breathing. So when we do these single limb exercises, it can be interesting to note what side we feel like is more like dialed in, what side we feel is, um, you know, better coordinated, right? And it's just good to note so that we can use that information and kind of work with more intention in the side that needs to learn a little bit more. Last one. And then we bring our leg down, bring our arms down, and then using your buttock muscles, lift your hips up and find a bit of a stretch in the front of the thigh and hip. Okay. Very nice. So we'll go ahead and set our hips down. And again, let's go side to side on the ball. And then go pelvic tilt in both directions. So a little cat cow and we'll do our circles around the ball. And the other direction with the circles. And make sure the ball is still underneath the flat part of your sacrum. Make sure the back of your neck is long. And we'll do one more here. Pulling into belly, pull up your pelvic floor, bring your right leg up to tabletop and your left leg joins it. Good, and then see if you can balance with both arms up toward the ceiling. Now we'll do a diagonal. So let's extend the left leg long and the right arm overhead. Good, and find the connection between your right rib cage and your left low ab, and then bring your arm and leg back in. And let's stay with the same side, okay? So right arm and left leg extend, and then come back in. Let's do about eight here on the one side. So we want to really imprint the pattern, right? So we've got this diagonal that we're working across our belly. And we'll think about how we can strengthen that, that diagonal line from the right rib cage to the left low ab. So we have three more here. So it's fun to work with a little bit of intention here of <clears throat> maintaining our balance on the ball and maintaining our position, you know, of our leg and arm in the room, making sure that we're kind of nailing that end position every time. And that's a good set. Let's go ahead and just hold your knees in to your <clears throat> chest for a moment and just rock your knees back and forth ever so slightly and we'll just kind of loosen up. You can do a few little tiny knee circles too while you're here, little, little knee stirs. Okay, ready for the next side? Let's go ahead and bring your arms up. Good, come into your close tabletop and then we'll do our left arm overhead as our right leg extends long. The other limbs aren't moving, right, theoretically. And we'll bring our right leg and left arm back in. So we're doing a set of eight on this side as well. So we find the connection between the left rib cage and the right low ab. And we keep moving with our breath. So making a conscious effort to stay in the same frame uh, you know, of our leg extension and arm uh, overhead, 
right? So we're trying to kind of make every repetition be the exact same range as the previous one, unless we need to dial it back at all. We can always make it a little smaller. And last one. Nice job. Let's just bring your knees in and then take one leg down and then the other, shoulders down the back. Good, let's just take a couple of breaths and wiggle your hips around on the ball. Perfect, so now take your legs a little wider in your feet and then go ahead and lift your hips up off the ball enough that you can pluck it out from underneath you. Then we'll lower our hips down. And then from here, just hold on to the ball. Your elbows can be down. Take your feet and your legs as wide as the edges of your mat. And then we're just gonna be very gentle about taking our knees over to one side and then the other. So this is our windshield wiper. Now your hip will lift with the movement. And friends that have had a uh, hip replacement, be careful about the, um, the top leg. So for example, if I go toward my left, my right leg is my top leg. We want to be careful that we're not moving this into a range that we've been instructed would be a contraindication, right? So the top leg is more straight out from the hip than falling to the midline on this movement, okay? And this is one of the things that causes your hip to lift. So this is a lovely movement. And as you keep exploring the side to side in the windshield wiper, you can almost feel like you can get a stretch in the front of the hip on the top leg. We'll just do a couple more on each side and your hip is lifting and you're rotating. So your pelvis and your lumbar spine are rotating um, and that rotation ends kind of at your shoulder blades. Okay, last one here. Good, now let's go ahead and heel toe your feet closer together and then we'll take the ball and place it in between your thighs. Now let's take our arms out and you can now that the balls between your thighs continue to place your feet even closer together. So now your in, inner line of your feet, your ankles are touching. And now we'll take our knees over to one side and everything's rotating like a cylinder. So we exhale to bring the legs to center, inhale to take your legs off to the side, exhale to bring the legs to center. We're just making sure that we're breathing with our movement. And as we take our legs to one side, it's more like our legs and hips and spine are all rolling like a cylinder to one side than the other. And we feel a little bit more ab engagement here on the way back. So your uh, hips and thighs are moving in one piece here. So we'll just do one more on each side. and come back to center. Now let's bring our arms beside us, draw the shoulder blades down, place your palms down on the mat, take a breath. And as you exhale, pull into belly and see if you can bring your knees in close, All right? So now take your legs around in a circle. So your knees are still bent. So just see how that action is when you take your legs around in a circle. Now go the other direction. So here we start to work with our oblique abdominals and we'll take our legs around in a circle in the opposite direction every time we complete one circle. The next circle begins in an opposite direction. So this is a corkscrew variation. And what we can do if we want more challenge is we can actually, once we've stopped at top, we can straighten our legs up. You can keep the ball between your thighs or you can move the ball to between your ankles and then take your legs around in a circle. You go the other direction. Try to keep your legs straight if you're doing this. So really try to engage your quadricep muscles. You squeeze the ball and pull up the pelvic floor. So let's do one more. Let's even out our side. So make sure you've done an equal number or the feeling that you have an equal number. And then we'll bring our knees in, take the ball out, take your hands in your 
uh, take your knees in your hands and take your knees around in a big mirror image circle pattern, okay? So we'll go both directions with the big circles. Perfect. And let's go ahead and float our feet down. Nicely done. And now let's um, roll to one side and press up just to one elbow. Place the ball behind your bra strap line and then lay back on the ball and immediately bring your hands behind your head to support your head. So from here, you could do a little bottom lift just to kind of organize your spine and comfortably rest on your sacrum. Your feet can be apart a bit and your knees. And then we'll carefully keeping the back of the neck long, lower our head back so that we're getting a little upper ab stretch. So with the back of the head long, we wanna make sure uh, the back of the neck, we wanna make sure that um, the rest of our back is comfortable. So we'll pull up in the pelvic floor, scoop our navel in and up, and then just with the slightest nod of our chin, look down over your cheekbones and come up, but only come up to neutral. So as if you were standing in good posture, that's where you go. And then we'll go ahead and lower back down. Okay, so if there's any discomfort at all, like if you're feeling discomfort down in your low ribs, then you can move yourself down, okay? So we'll just keep uh, traveling in this range of motion. So basically what we have is our upper abs working um, in a position that's safe for our bones because we're moving from extension to neutral. So we're not going into flexion. Now, if you do not have bone density loss or disc issues, you can come up further into a full upper body lift and then go all the way back down. And on the way back down for everybody, try to just touch the knuckles of your hands on the mat without actually resting down. And let's see if we can just kind of get this nice movement going where we feel our ribs pulling down toward our navel. We feel that we're engaging in our low abs, okay? And we're working in kind of a continuous loop. So keep breathing, okay? And now let's see about adding a little bit of rotation. So come up to neutral and then rotate left and rotate right and see if you can use the ball as a way to help the movement along. So when you rotate right, for example, and you feel like your right shoulder blade is on the ball, okay, and the left isn't, and then when you rotate left, it's the left shoulder blade on the ball, the right isn't, okay? All right, so we have a nice rotation. Now, if you have uh, bone density loss or disc issues, this is the one you stay with. If you don't have that, you can come up a little higher and think about kind of aiming the center of your heart toward one thigh and then the other, okay? And then everybody, as we continue the rotation, let's go ahead and bring the knee up of the leg that we're rotating toward, come back to center, put that leg down, and go to the other side. So now we're marching and rotating, okay? And your head is nestled in your hands, and your neck is nice and soft, and we're breathing, and we're just enjoying building up this uh, warmth in our bellies, okay? And we'll just do a couple more on each side. Perfect, and then once we've done, we'll just stretch over the ball for a moment. Take a couple of breaths. And then we'll roll to one side, bring the ball out from behind us. Okay. And then let's go ahead and go onto our belly. Okay. 
So on the belly, if your back does not like um, extension, and some of us don't, people with arthritis and stenosis, you can take a pillow and place it underneath your abdomen. And that will lengthen the um, low back, okay? And everybody, we can take this ball and place it underneath our chest. Okay, so this is an offering. If this is something that doesn't feel good to you, you don't need to do it. You can just be laying on your mat. So with the ball underneath the chest, we'll go ahead and place our hands wide. Our arms, our elbows are right below your shoulders and you're right at the edges of the mat with your arms. Now lengthen the back of your neck, tongue on the roof of the mouth so your neck is better supported. Take a breath. And as you exhale, just gently press up and then inhale, press down. And exhale, press up. And inhale, press down. Okay, so this is kind of part A, right? Part B, if you choose to accept the task, is next time you come down, you can have your hands like off the mat, Bring your fingertips right behind your ears, not your head, your ears, right? Your elbows are winged up, and then you can come up and down, okay? And you may or may not notice that your buttocks want to tighten when you come up, and that is actually a good thing. So we'll just do a few more. So we're working on a nice back extension here. So this is some direct back strengthening. And do a couple more. Beautiful job. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and just bring our forearms back down to the mat. Make fists of your arms. Okay. Now pull yourself a little bit forward so you lift your heart and then pull your belly in and imprint your pubic bone, tighten up the buttock muscles. See if you can attempt to kick yourself in the booty twice with one leg, lengthen that leg, twice with the other leg, lengthen that leg. So we keep moving with our breath. So feet can be flexed here. We're just going back and forth. So we have a little kick, kick, and kick, kick. Make sure the back of your neck is long and you're actively pressing your arms into the mat to pull your heart forward and pulling up your belly and breathing all of those things. And one more, and we'll rest down. So now we'll take our arms that with our fists, tuck your toes, lift up your knees, lift up your thighs, pull up into your belly, tighten up your buttocks, lift up your hips, and then press the floor away, and we move into a plank. If that's too much, drop your knees down, and keep your torso lifted, okay? So we'll just hold here, pull up into belly, find your inner thighs, zip up from your pelvic floor all the way up into your core. And one more, and then bring your knees down, take your knees apart, wide, toes together. Walk your forearms back until you're in a child's pose. And then you can use your, uh, your ball or your fists stacked underneath your head, right? I think fists are better, the ball's really deflated. So you can maintain a uh, fairly neutral spine in this wide-legged child's pose. You take a couple of breaths here. Beautiful job. So now let's go ahead and come up into quadruped. So we've got all fours. Okay. And we'll organize our wrists and elbows below our shoulder and our knees below our hips. If your wrists bother you, you can be on fists here or you could be on forearms if you like. Okay. So pull up into belly. 
pull your shoulder blades down your back. Let's just do a few little cat cows just to you know, loosen up our spine. Okay. And find your neutral spine. Okay. And then without your back or your hips changing their uh, levelness, extend your right leg out long and with your toes turned under in the high heel chew position on the mat. Okay, good. Now, Take your left hand and without changing the levelness of your shoulders, place the ball underneath your left hand. Okay, so you're not going to be weight bearing on the ball hand as much as you are on the floor hand. Okay, all right. So now let's go ahead and make some circles with the ball with our hand. So one direction and the other, you can feel some work going on in the left buttock now. And if you want more, pull up into belly a little bit more, lift your right leg straight up, engaging the buttock muscle. Okay, good. And just keep changing directions on the ball. Okay, good. And that is good for that side. We'll go ahead and place our Left hand down, bring the right knee in, pull your shoulders down, level hips, extend the left leg, toes down on the mat like high heeled shoes, pull up into belly, ball underneath the right hand, make some circles with the ball on the mat. So just keep changing directions. Do a few in one direction and a few in the other direction. And then if you wish, you can go ahead and just lift your leg up, make sure it's only going to Hip high, you feel some good glute engagement on both sides. And we're breathing. Very nice. And we'll go ahead and finish that up. Put your hand down, bring your knee in, knees apart, toes together, and press your hips back into the child's pose, which is also a glute stretch. So that's kind of nice. We'll stack our fists, bring your elbows wide, put your forehead on your fists. Take a couple more breaths. Good, and then we'll come on up and we'll go to our side. So now let's take the ball and place it underneath our side waist. So our legs are going to be bent and together, and then the ball is underneath the side waist. The ball is your fulcrum. Okay, so where it is matters, especially if you're long waisted. So now we'll place our fingertips around our ears. Keep the bottom elbow down on the mat and just see if you can find the muscles to bring your uh, elbow closer to your hip. Straight side flexion. Okay, so if you feel any forward or backward uh, rotation, just see how you can position your body so that your hips and shoulders are more stacked and you can just maintain this straight side flexion. And then keep your legs squeezing together. If you're ready for more, wing the bottom elbow out of the way. We come all the way to the mat and then come up and come back down to the mat. Okay, if that's not gonna happen for you today, don't despair. You just keep stay on your elbow here and stay with the first variation and just start, try not to push with the bottom elbow. So you really try to make a, your side waist work more, okay? If you have to keep your elbow down and that's how you get stronger in this uh, movement, okay? So let's do one more, keep squeezing your legs together. Perfect job. And then we'll lay down over the ball, bring your top arm overhead, Extend your bottom leg long and actively and just go into a nice side stretch. So take a breath, take another breath, and then bring your arm back down, bend your knee in, use your top arm to push yourself up, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and flip over to the other side. And we have our legs stacked and bent. And place the ball underneath your side waist, it's your fulcrum. And then we'll go ahead and get into position. So fingertips are surrounding your ears. We're smiling and breathing. And then we come up and down. And just notice like 
if you feel like you need to move your fulcrum a little bit, you know, uh, things are going to be different on this side, right? It's a new side. It might feel easier. It might not feel quite as easy. And if you feel like you're ready, you go ahead and wing your elbow and then come up. So if you feel your feet lifting, that means that it's probably right on your edge of being, you know, that's your edge of challenge, right? So we wanna keep our feet down. It's interesting one side to the other, how we can feel really dialed in on one side and then on the other side, not so much. So again, if you feel like it's, you know, this is your side that needs to be strengthened, that's certainly true for my body. Just keep your elbow down and work a few where you're trying not to push with the bottom elbow. Okay, and the important thing is we maintain our alignment in this, in this side flexion. And one more. And then we'll go ahead and lay down. Head on the arm, other arm overhead. And then active leg straightens out. And we get into a nice side stretch here. We'll take a couple of breaths. And we'll bring our arm back in, bring our leg back in. Use your top arm to press up and we'll swing our legs around. That was really good, you guys. Let's go ahead and move into our standing work. So we're gonna take our ball with us and we'll go ahead and place our hands wide on the ball, okay? So, our upper body movement will be to push the ball and then grasp the ball with long fingers and just gently pull. So let's just do that for a moment. Push the ball with, and have your palms be wide and your fingers wide. Then keeping your fingers wide, pull the ball. And we'll do that one more time before we add in the legs. So we push and you may feel your chest muscles working. Maybe your bicep is working. And when you pull, see if you can feel the line of muscles down the back of your arm and into your shoulder blades working. Okay, so now go ahead and transfer your weight over to your left leg and then lift your right leg up. If this doesn't feel safe to you, you can just lift your leg enough so that your toes are still on the floor um, and your uh, weight bearing more on the left leg, okay? And then we'll continue to push and pull the ball and we're gonna stand on our one leg for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, now put your right foot down, shift your weight over, make sure your hips are level, lift the left or keep your toe down for safety if you feel like you need to, okay? And we'll just push, pull the ball and stand on one leg for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good job. Okay, so now we're standing on two legs. Wiggle your hips back and forth, kind of shake it out. Okay, and then we'll take our uh, ball in front of us, just hold with both hands softly. No need to continue push pulling, that's plenty of work for your hands. Take a breath, make sure there's nothing behind you to uh, trip you up, and then step back with your right toes. So you're zipped up in your front line, okay? You stepped back, and then if you need more stretch in the right thigh, bend to the right knee, keeping your torso upright until you feel a stretch. Now we'll take the ball forward, Shoulders are down, elbows are slightly rounded. Inhale, rotate to left. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate to right. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate to left. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate to right. Exhale, center. Good, now that was holding the ball with both hands. Right leg still back, we're zipping up, pubic bone and navel to sternum. Keep your right arm forward, take the ball and in your left hand and rotate back to open your chest toward the left side wall. Keep breathing, come back, 
Take the ball in your right hand, left arm is forward, inhale, rotate the ball back, follow the ball with your head, neck, shoulders, and eyes, and then come back to center. So we'll do a couple more on each side and just see if you can do this and maintain the position of your legs and your pelvis. Good. And come back to center. I have a cat watching me through the kitchen door right now. Inhale and exhale. It looks like he's watching a tennis match. Inhale, his head's going back and forth. It's really hilarious. And we'll come on in, bring the ball to you. Just pull in your navel and lean forward ever so slightly just to release the stretch and step forward. And then like shake your hips back and forth and feel how the leg that was back feels so much looser, okay? So that's what we're gonna do for the other side now, obviously. We'll step back with the left leg, land on your toes, zip up from pubic bone to navel to sternum. Shoulders are back and down, corners of the mouth are lifted. So now if you need more stretch in the front of your left thigh, you bend that knee a little bit so your body stays straight and just lower down a little bit. And then we'll take our ball in front and keeping both hands on the ball, we'll inhale and rotate. So this is a much smaller range of motion. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Your hips stay pointed forward as you rotate and center. Inhale, rotate and center. Good, now grasp the ball. In your right hand, your left hand stays forward and we'll inhale, rotate. Open up your chest to the side wall. Exhale, center, change hands. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. So we'll do a couple more rotations on each side, keeping your hip pointers forward. Just finding a lovely rotation in our spine. And keep following your ball with your head, neck, shoulders, and eyes, and breathing. Nicely done. We'll bring the ball back to center, bring it to us, look down slightly, pulling in your navel to release the stretch and step forward. And then we'll wiggle our hips back and forth. Everybody all even now? Fabulous. Let's get back to the mat. So we come to our side. We flip over to our back, we organize our bones. So we want our back of our neck long, shoulders down, lift and lower our hips, okay. And then we'll go ahead and take the ball in both hands over our chest. All right, very good. Now let's drop our ribs toward the mat. So just soften your rib cage and see if you can take a breath into the mat. And then exhale. Find your abs on your exhale. Let's do that one more time. Just see if you can breathe your ribs into the mat. And then exhale and pull into belly. Now keep your ribs softened down toward the mat. Bring your arms overhead and only go as far as you can without your rib cage lifting off the mat and your back arching. And then just come back with your arms. So we'll do that a couple more times. Just find your range. So those of us with a very flexible shoulder will be able to go further. Um, and those of us that have an average shoulder will be about cheekbone level with the bicep. Okay. So now we'll have the ball over our chest. Bring your right leg up to tabletop. Good, and as you bring the ball overhead, extend one leg and then bring the ball and the knee back in toward each other. Okay, so we'll just do that a couple times. All right. Good, and then switch legs. So extend one leg, both arms overhead holding the ball. So notice what your range is in your leg. And know that when we go to two legs, it's going to be, your legs are likely going to be higher in the room. Okay, good. Now we'll take both legs down to the mat, both arms overhead, pull into belly, 
place the ball between your thighs, bring your empty arms overhead, you're squeezing the ball with your thighs, come back, grab the ball out from between your thighs, bring it overhead, keep breathing, put your ball between your thighs, bring your empty arms overhead, and so on. So this is the beginning of ball pass. So you can do this and you can focus on keeping your abs really drawn in and scooped and just work on the rhythm of the exercise, right? So you get a chance to work a little upper body and a little thigh squeeze here, or you can bring both legs up to tabletop and then you can start working on a ball pass and it doesn't have to be big, right? It can be legs extending up toward the ceiling would be your most gentle version. The further your legs extend away from you and the lower your legs go in the room, the harder the work. So you wanna make sure that you're choosing a range of motion in your ball pass and every time you, you come back to the ball, Right, you switch which body part is holding it, right? But uh, you want to choose a variation where your, your face and your neck are feeling pretty happy, right? So if you're feeling a lot of strain in your neck, it just means you're, you're trying too hard on this one and you need to like dial it back a little bit. So we, we love to, tr to try hard, we humans, we just, Love that. So let's do one more. Good. And we'll end up with the ball between our thighs. Bring our legs down, take your arms out and take your knees over to one side. Take a couple of breaths. And then exhale back to center. Inhale off to the other side. And then exhale back to center. Very nicely done. We'll go ahead and keep the ball in between our thighs, pull our shoulders down, pull into belly, pull up your pelvic floor, engage your buttocks and lift your hips. So you've got the ball, squeezing the ball, you're using your buttocks. Hopefully they engage before your hamstrings. And, and we'll go ahead and just come up into our bottom lift. Now from here, Lengthen your spine as you set it back down. Good. And then come up again. Nice. Now keep squeezing the ball. Transfer your weight to your left leg. Extend your right leg. So you've got the ball. So your thighs are still parallel. Lower down. Bend your right knee. Put it back on the floor. Lift up your hips. Transfer your weight to your right side. Extend the left leg lower down, and then bring the left leg down, okay? So anytime we're doing something like this in, in uh, our class, right? We're working on transferring our weight. We wanna make sure that our hips are staying level as we do this. We're just gonna keep going from side to side. So we're on the right, left leg extended, lower down, lower both feet, and then lift up with both. Transfer to the left, extend the right, lower down. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up the set. And we'll take our uh, knees in both hands, bring our knees in. Now you've got the ball, right? So as you take your legs around in a circle, you're looking for the edges of your sacrum. So you're just gonna go around in a circle and massage the edges of the sacrum. Let's go one more time this direction. And then we'll do the other direction. Good, and hug your knees in for a moment. Maybe rock your knees back and forth and feel how that creates sort of a cat-cow movement in your spine. Good. And then we'll bring our feet down, take the ball out and roll to one side. So from here, we can go into our Z sit and we'll have our support arm down on the floor. Your shoulder is down in the support arm and bring your other arm up, take a breath. 
and then exhale, come down to your forearm and bring your other arm overhead and just take another breath. A beautiful side stretch and then come on up, press away with your forearm. See if you can balance, grab a hold of your other shin and go into a counter stretch. And then come back to balance, gracefully flip down and arm overhead. And you can stay here and just enjoy the lovely side stretch. Or you could inhale and open your heart. Exhale, pull belly in deeply. Rotate the rib cage. And then we start getting into a, a glute stretch here. This is our mermaid. Okay, they're both mermaid. Um, if this does not feel good to your knee, go onto your back and do your figure four stretch from earlier. If it's not enough for you, and you do not have significant bone loss in your trochanter, you could go into uh, pigeon pose, okay, from yoga. So you need to be aware of how things are feeling when we move into these stretches. And we'll keep breathing. So it takes about 20 or 30 seconds to uh, have the stretch really feel like it's done its job. So we just wait for that moment when we feel like, oh, it's kind of not as intense as it was earlier. And then we'll wait there back in our bottom arm, inhale and wind. Exhale, come on up, and we'll switch our legs around. So forearm, shoulders pulled down, other arm is up toward the ceiling. We lengthen our spine first, take a breath, and then exhale, come on over for a lovely side stretch. And we breathe. And then on our exhale, we bring our top arm up and our bottom arm up to balance and then hold on to your shin and counter stretch. Let's take another breath here. And then come back to balance and float back down to your arm and go back into the side stretch. You can stay here or just travel on. Inhaling, opening your heart, exhale, deep belly scoop, your cage rotates. And just keep breathing. Do so you have all of your options here of the figure four on your back or a pigeon pose if you don't have uh, bone density loss in your trochanter? Just keep breathing. <clears throat> And soften your face and eyes, separate your teeth, lift the corners of your mouth. And we'll take one more breath here. And then we'll inhale, go in wide, exhale, come on up. Good. You did a great job. Keep your shoulders down and your abs in till I see you again. And stay well, everybody.